So welcome to a little safety video and for about the next 10 minutes we're going to talk you through some of the safety aspects when you're walking in the laboratory. So when you come into the laboratory each day the first thing you want to do is grab your key for your lab drawer from the wallet on the front of the bench. Take your key, open up your drawer, and then place the key back in the brown leather wallet in the front of the lab. If you've brought a bag in with you, put that bag in one of the tote boxes by the front door. We also need to talk about your laboratory attire and the clothes you're going to wear during the laboratory. Make sure you have your safety glasses on, a pair is provided in the laboratory drawer, and you will keep those lab glasses on at all times during the laboratory. If the glasses are getting uncomfortable, then take a break and step outside the lab to take your lab glasses off. Make sure you have a t-shirt on during the laboratory, one with sleeves which are closer to the elbow than they are to the shoulder. You need trousers which go down to your ankles or a skirt that goes down to your ankle. Shorts and trousers which are above the ankles are not suitable attire. You don't allow people to drink in the laboratory. We don't allow people to eat in the laboratory. And we don't allow people to chew gum in the laboratory. So let's talk a little bit about burettes. Burettes which are used during acid-base reactions with maybe some acid in the burette and some base in the beaker and we'll get to the neutralization point, which is pH 7. When using a burette, make sure that you use tap water to clean the burette before you start. And as a final rinse, you can use distilled water from the distilled water tap at the back of the room. It has a nice pink label. Clamp stands can be found underneath the cupboards, below the sinks. When you're pouring material into the burette, don't pour above your head, pour below shoulder height. When you're ready, Clamp the burette to the stand and it fits in between two sets of rubber stoppers. You're now ready to use your burette and perform your acid base titration. With a small amount of chemical indicator in the solution, the solution will change colour as you move from acidic to basic conditions. Let's look at using a pipette in the laboratory. Pipettes for making a much more accurate measurement of a specific volume of liquid. So we can connect the pipette to our biorette pump by just pushing in and giving a quick twist to the side. Don't push it too far, we don't want to lock it in there, we want to be able to pull it apart easily enough. So just a quick push and a twist and far enough so that it's not going to fall out. When you try to pick up some liquid, you'll see this dial on the side of the pump. Just crank that up and as it cranks up, you'll start to take up some of the liquid. 
And when it comes to dispensing the liquid, make sure you stop at the right point. Remember that 5 milliliter mark on the pipette finishes about here. So you're not dispensing all of the liquid which you've picked up. Only dispense down to the 5 milliliter mark and that's your accurate measurement of the liquid volume. Always, again, clean out pipettes before you use them, just as we used water to clean out the burettes. When dispensing into or from a pipette, never take directly from the original chemical bottle. Always pour into a separate beaker. Pouring into a separate beaker avoids contamination of the source chemical. Glass waste doesn't go in the normal trash bin, it goes into the special white and blue glass box. We also have to be careful when dispensing liquids from a pipette in the laboratory. And there's one thing you always want to do, and one thing you never want to do. Never carry a pipette across a room upside down. The liquid will drain into the rubber stopper at the top and will contaminate the next solution. So when you have a solution to move around, place a pipette inside a test tube and you can carry the test tube with the pipette around the room. When measuring masses of chemicals on a balance, Place your beaker on the balance and then use a the tear button to zero the mass. Now you can add your chemical directly to the beaker and you'll be measuring on the balance just the mass of the chemical. When using the Bunsen burner, be ready with your ignition source so that gas doesn't build up in the room too much. You can use a nozzle at the front of the Bunsen burner to adjust the height of the Bunsen flame. Twisting clockwise and counterclockwise will lower and raise the height of the flame. Now twist the stem of the Bunsen burner itself and twisting that stem will allow oxygen in at the bottom of the Bunsen burner. Your flame now burns with a much hotter blue flame which is about 800 degrees Celsius. When you're ready and you're performing a chemical reaction you're always using the blue flame, the hotter flame, for that chemical reaction. When using the Bunsen burner, remember chemicals can react fast, so never point a test tube towards you, always point away from you. When getting rid of your chemicals at the end of the experiment, never pour down the sink unless instructed, always pour into one of the waste bottles at the front bench. The waste bottles should be clearly and regularly marked in these one litre transparent bottles with the blue safety diamond on the left side. So these are some of the basic rules for working in the laboratory. We do have other rules and everyone will need to sign the student safety contract. It's a four page document that you'll find. Sign it in block capitals on the front page sign it in ink on the fourth page and also sign your name and date it. And once you've handed in this document to your instructor, you've signed a contract. You're saying that you have read the safety contract, you're saying that you understand it, and you're also saying that you're going to comply with those rules. 
If any of these rules are broken during a lab period, they could be grounds for you being asked to leave the laboratory. These rules are here for your safety and for the safety of every student around you. Please heed them and please have some fun with your chemistry. <laughs> Was that too dramatic for you? <laughs> that was terrible! Retake! Retake! Cut, cut, cut! <laughs> I can't get it open at first, it was like... Uh. Uh, oh! Okay. Oh, it's still recording! It's very slow, isn't it? <laughs> it's on full mass. Fail. I knew we should have hired Marcy to do this. <laughs> oh gosh. Go when you're ready. Okay, we'll try that again because remember the point was yeah, that exactly you are pointing it towards yourself yeah. and that ah. was a bad thing. <laughs> gotcha. Oh my gosh, these people. Working with Sullivan. She's so mean. Just the, <laughs> this the, moon's, the mood swings. Oh, terribly. I heard that she punched a cop in the face as well. Very I temperamental. Did. Yeah. Very. I did. Yeah, I bet you did. Look at these guns. Yeah. <laughs> Show me them guns. <laughs> 